lesson do we have to start from? That is, which lesson do you want to see the answers for? Half-life. Half-life? Okay. Is that the lesson that's furthest back? Or is there anything before? Chapter three, I think. Yeah, but my question is, if I was to look at the lessons here on atoms, which one am I starting at for answers? Which one, guys? Here, I can give you the list here if you want. Ah, come on, Jerry, what's wrong with you? Ah, come on. It's fairly open. Because of my roommate, I cannot put heater on or close the window right now, so I feel really bad and my computer is really worried. Oh, okay. So every time I want oh, okay, to. Okay, you better close the window. Stop that whining. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> my roommate is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's closed. Better? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I feel long. <laughs> Which lesson <laughs> am I starting with here now? Let me get it. I have <laughs> decay, decay equation, half life graph of log. Decay. But we don't have any. Yeah, I can. I can. Okay, fine. Let's just get into this. I'm trying to get the signal. That's what I am doing. There we go. Right. <laughs> what is he being curvy? What's he talking about? What's going on? Okay. <coughs> right. Let's start with the first one then, the K. Oh yeah, the equations here. Right. Um Let's have a look. So, uh, two thirty-eight ninety-two U plus one zero neutron. Uh, that becomes something with a gamma. Well, that's two thirty-nine ninety-two. It's still uranium plus uh, plus a gamma. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, next one. 6329, is this copper? Copper. Plus another neutron that will become. Uh, now, this is interesting. This one here has two neutrons. Uh, so that would have to be 61. Ooh. 62. 62? Oh, because, sorry, 64, yeah. 6229. Come on. Still Copper, yeah. Right, 2713 aluminium plus uh, a 1 0 neutron, and what do we get here? That gives us an alpha particle, and what do we have with the alpha particle? Right, this has to be 11 down here, doesn't it? Yeah. And this one has to be 23, no, uh, tw 24. 24. Uh, what's 11? Right, yeah. Sorry, that's NA, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 53.24, yeah, plus, plus an alpha, uh, that has to become something plus a hydrogen, plus a proton, right, so what's that, uh, 4, or 5, 6, 7, 56, yes. and then 25, uh, what's before CR? What's MN? Manganese. Manganese? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, now, magnesium, is it? No, no. Well, which one are we on? D. Did I skip one? AL. Oh, no, another AL here. Yeah. 2713 AL plus a 1,0 neutron. And then that becomes something with a proton. Uh, this has to be 12, which is carbon, right? Mm -hmm. No, magnesium, sorry, carbon 6. 
Yeah. Uh, MG. Uh, MG, yeah, and this MG. one here is a 27? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 2312 magnesium plus a proton becomes something with a neutron. Uh, AL 27, is it 20? No, 2313 aluminium. Okay. Uh, and then last of number one, 94BE. Okay. 94BE plus a 42HE. 126 carbon plus a one zero neutron. Come on, why are you late, dude? Nice. Oh, you got to release me one chapter. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, continue. Number two. Number two. Uh, AC undergoes three alphas. What is the result? Okay, so you have two, two, uh, two, two, five, is it? 89 AC, and we'll have three alphas. So that's a 6, so that has to be an 83 here, isn't it? And that's a 12, so that has to be a 213, is it? Now what's 83? B? Alright, so. I'm sorry, B. That's it. Okay, and the last one. Calculate how many alpha and betas there are. Uh, 2, 3, 2, 90 thorium becomes lead. 2 of 8, 82 TB. Now, somebody was asking me what happens when it decays and what it becomes and all of this. This is a good example here. This thorium will decay and release some alphas and betas and then become lead. And lead, you know, is a very stable element. In fact, it's the, I think it's the, is the most stable element there is. So there will be no more decaying from the lead. Mm. Uh, let's see what we have. So we have alpha, uh, sorry, x alphas plus y betas. Yeah. Right, so we should have four uh, x plus zero y equals two three two minus two hundred and eight, and we also should have two uh, x minus y equals ninety minus eighty two. That's an eight, mm -hmm. uh, and then what's that? Twenty four. So x equals six, is it? So that's the number of alphas, and y is four. So six alphas and four betas. Mm -hmm. So when the thorium decays, it will release six alphas, four betas, and become less. Mm -hmm. And you've lost your thorium. It's disintegrated. Okay. Uh, next one now. Uh, Neptunium, is it? Two, three, seven, ninety-three, Neptunium. Okay, two, O. Oh. 983 BI plus. Okay. So again, how many alphas and how many betas? Uh, right, so if we look at this at uh, the top line, 237 minus uh, 209, what's that? 18? Is it? Yeah, 18. That should equal 4x. <coughs> huh? <laughs> uh, no, no! 28 should equal 4x. Mm -hmm. So that x equals 7. Pen's not working this second. We'll have to catch up. There we go. And then we have uh, 10 should equal 2x minus y. It, it? Yeah. So that's 10 yeah. minus 40. Why is 4? Yeah. Y is 4. Okay, so what's that? 7 alphas, 4 betas. Right.
next one now. Uranium. Decaying into lead. 23892 uranium uh, becomes 20682 TBS plus so many alphas plus so many betas. Right, so what's that? 14, uh, no, 32 should equal 4x, so x is 8, 8 alphas. And then 10 should equal 2x minus y. So y is 6 betas. Yep. And lastly, another uranium, but this time uranium 235. Uh, and that again becomes a 207 lead plus so many alphas plus so many betas. Right, so what's that now? Uh, 28 equals 4x. So that means x is 7. And then 10 equals 2x minus y. So y is 14? Four. Oh. 4. 10 might out for you. So 7 alphas and 4 betas are released. I like this question in the exam uh, when they give you an equation to balance, you know, because it's straightforward for like three, four marks, you know, no messing about, just a little bit of maths and you have your answer and it should be right. Like, I mean, 99% of the time students get this question fully right. In fact, maybe even 100%. I can't even think of correcting an exam where students didn't balance this equation correctly. So it should be a, a, no, a nice three, four mark question for you in the exam. Uh, okay, so let's go on to the next one then, I think. What is after this one? Aha. Uh -huh. Do I need, uh, I need a calculator possibly for this? Uh, okay. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. This one here. A sample of iodine-134 has a mass of 268. The molar mass is 134 grams. The initial decay activity of the sample is 1.32 times 10 to 20 BQ. They are destroys 1.32 times 10 to 20 destructions per second initially. Uh, part A, initially how many moles are there? Okay. What's wrong? What is the question? What are you talking about, Monica? I don't think we do this one. No. Oh. Oh. Yeah. oh, oh, dang. <laughs> Thanks, Monica. Right. What's the value of the decay constant? You have the N and you have the A. Now, why did I put the minus in? Because I, I never used what? I never said decay. So I have to show it's decay by putting in the minus now. It's as if I didn't say deceleration. That's one of the minus. Uh, okay. Uh, so, first one here. Um, we can use A equals minus lambda N. Mm -hmm. So, lambda equals minus A over N, which then is uh, 1023 over 1024. So, that's 0.1. What is the activity after 10 seconds? 
So that's A equals A0 E minus lambda T. That will be zero point no uh, the initial activity. Now I'll put in the yeah, I'll put in the minus. Um do I I know the A zero? I do. It's uh ten to twenty three. E minus 0 0.1 times 10. So you can see why I picked the 10 because that's just minus 10 to 23 e to the minus 1. So if I just bash that into the calculator, uh, 3.68 times 10 to the 22. many radioactive atoms are there after 10 seconds? Okay, well that's the N. But you can use the formula uh, A equals minus lambda N. So the N would be minus A over lambda, which would be minus minus 3.68 times 10 to the 22 over 0 0.1, which is 3.68 times 10 to the 23 atoms. D. How long until you have 10 to 21 atoms? Atoms? Yeah. Uh, okay, so N equals N0 E minus lambda T. So we have 10 to 21 equals 10 to the 24 E minus 0 0.1 T. So divide and I get 0 0.001. Don't I? A thousand. Uh, that's equal to E minus 0 0.1 T. Log this, log cancel that, and then divide by the minus 0 0.1. So log 0 0.201 divided by uh, minus 0 0.1. 69 seconds. 1 minute, 9 seconds. Okay, so just before I continue and everything's okay there? Just kind of straightforward. Yeah? Alright. A sample of sodium 24 initially has a mass of 10 grams. Uh, seven hours later, there is 5 grams. Sodium will decay by releasing a beta particle. What atom will it become after it releases the beta uh, uh, particle? So, sodium 24. Uh, what's sodium? 12? 11? Yeah. No, not 12. So. Uh, that becomes something plus a beta. 12 is mg. Yeah. Alright, so sodium 24 decays into magnesium. So, if you look at it here, we start off with 10 grams of Na. And uh, this is radioactive, so off of it is coming beta radiation. Uh, then sometime later we have uh, 5 grams. So there's 5 grams of sodium still releasing the beta, and then you have this uh, magnesium, which you know should be stable. Yeah. Um, Okay, so what will it become? It will become magnesium. Uh, that's part A. B. Multiply both sides by the molar mass and divide by Avogadro's number. What is the new equation? So, we kind of did this one. Um, if I divide by Avogadro, what I have is the number of moles. And if I multiply by the molar mass, I have mass. So I get M equals M0 E minus lambda T. That's the new equation. Okay. What's the value of the decay constant? Okay, so uh, this will be 10. No, uh, this is 10 grams. Seven hours later, there's 5 grams. And... Uh, so that's 5 grams. 
Now I should convert this into kilograms, but I just want to show you that it actually doesn't matter because they're both grams, you can cancel out the grams. And I should really use seconds, but let's see what happens if I use hours just to show you. This will be a half equals E minus 7 lambda. Log it, cancel, divide by minus 7. Log 0 0.5 divided by minus 7. I get this. 0 0.099 but what unit is that? see this is no longer per second per hour. per hour yeah and that's fine to do in the exam you could do that I just wanted to show you that you could uh, how long until only 10% remains? okay well that means how long until there's only one gram left and you start at 10 and uh, we'll keep this in hours Okay, so you know the story here. Divide, you get 0 0.1. Log, and then divide by that. And that will be the T. So what have we got here? Uh, on the top, I have log of 0 0.1. And on the bottom, I have minus my answer. So about 23 and a quarter hours. Yeah. <laughs> Almost one day. 23 hours and uh, 15 minutes yeah. yeah so again nice question for the exam I think nothing too strange here <coughs> say again in the exam it looks like that it's really yeah I know this is why I say the best question to do in section B is the atoms question. The physics exam is more segmented by topic. So in physics exam there'll be like a mechanics question and there'll be like an atoms question. Now in the atoms question there could be some mechanics formulas or for example in the field question there could be some mechanics formulas. For example you saw that in the field lesson chapter you had to use the circular motion equations quite a bit especially with the planets mm -hmm. uh, okay next now uh, graphs? no, half life ah, it's not taking that long to do these questions, they're quite straightforward Ah, yes, 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 this one now. Uh, a nice to top radon 222 two, uh, has a half life of 2.8 days. Some radon has leaked out uh, and it's estimated 25 grams have escaped into the room. How long until less than one gram remains? Okay, so we start off with 25. A half life later, we've, we've, we've 12 and a half. Then 6.25. Then 3.125 then one point something and then less than one so that's six twelve point five first six three one and a bit yes like five uh, so five five two two point eight fourteen days two weeks two weeks B. What is the K constant? Alright, so you can use the formula uh, lambda equals um, Yeah, I'm trying to write it right. So log 2 over log 2 over half-life. Yeah, so that'll be 0 0.69 over 2.8 days. Now, I'm going to stick to using days just so I'm not having to use seconds for pain. 0 0.69 divided by 2.8 
So what's that now? Uh, 0 0.246. Because uh, then I have an extra step I have to do. Ah, oh, fine. Fine. That was fine. 2.8 times 24 times 3,600. 2.87, 2.87, 10 to the minus, 10 to the minus 6. Per second. Right. What is the initial activity? Note the molar mass is 222. Okay, so how many moles do I have? Uh, that will be 225 divided by 222. Uh, so that is 25 divided by 222, which is this number. Now that's how many moles we have. But, uh, we should multiply this by Avogadro for atoms. 6.78? Mm -hmm. uh, no, N. 6.78 times 10 to the 22 mm -hmm. atoms. Okay, what is the initial activity? No, I did that one. How? Oh, I still have to get the activity. So that's minus lambda mm -hmm. n. And we know the lambda earlier, but I should have saved it on my calculator. Uh, shift store, I'll put this in uh, B. And let me just go back and get my answer here. This one here, wasn't it? Shift store A, alpha A, alpha B. Uh, the activity is this? No, I did something wrong then. Uh, it was 6.7? This is it here? Oh! Where's my A? Oh, this is a Ship store A. A, B. Oh, it's getting worse. <laughs> And that doesn't matter. 6.78 times 10 to the 22. Yeah. 1.95 10 to the 17. Yeah. Okay. D. How long until there is exactly one gram? Well, we can use our formula we had. We, yeah. How can it be different if you use lambda for per second and per hour? Ah, yeah. So if you did per day or per hour, then it's no longer BQ here. Because BQ are atoms per second. So whatever you have, it would be per that unit of time. So if I kept using days, then the number here I get wouldn't be this, but it wouldn't be BQ anymore. It'd be atoms per day. But, but you use day, right? No, no, I, they made me use seconds. I was going to use days, but they didn't want me doing that, so I used seconds. What? What's your question? Give me your question. So 2.87 is... It's seconds. Okay, and um... What happened to my A? I don't know what happened to your A. How long until there's one gram remaining? Okay, so one gram equals 25 grams e to the minus lambda t. So dividing we get log 1 over 25 over the minus 2.87 times 10 to the minus 6. That's the t log 1 over 25 divided by minus 2.87 times 10 to the power of minus 6 this many seconds that many hours 13 days about uh, 
E. If the room is 20 by 30 by 3, then what's the density of radon in the room where there is 1 gram present? So the density is mass over volume, which is uh, 20 by 30 by 3. Okay, well, let's put that in. Uh, a very small amount. 5.56 tenths to minus 7. Uh, 5.56 times 10 to the minus 7 kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, if the molar mass is 222, then what is the molarity? Okay, so the molarity is the now. But I, I would, I think I meant when there was one gram. Yeah. So uh, how many moles is one gram? Let's get that first. Uh, one over two two two. Well, I don't know. I wasn't clear with my question. If the molar mass is 222 grams, then what is the molarity of radon in the room? No, the molarity can be at any time. It's just a concentration. Like No, because I feel like because I just asked you to do this, I would want the same thing done here. The molarity is constant. No, it's not. It is Per gram. I mean, it's, it's a concentration for one unit per kilogram of the gram. Correct, but what happens if the concentration is decreasing? Is it constant? Yeah. Hmm. Do you know this from your reaction rate? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I'm sorry, well, I'm going to use one gram over 222. Two, two. How many litres are there? 20 times 30 times 3 times a thousand. No. <laughs> times a thousand. <laughs> because each meter cubed has a thousand liters. Yeah. So the molarity is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 9. No, no, they wouldn't do that in the exam. Here, Monica, <laughs> to make you happy. Happy now? Great. Okay, got that? Yeah. Right. Uh, okay, that's that one. Did I give you anything to do in... Uh, yeah. Graphs? Yeah, okay. Well, I'll, I'll do the answer now. No, no, no. I'm not sure. Yeah, I didn't do this one. Oh, you say you will discuss another huh? today. I refuse to do this. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm doing it now. Time in seconds. <laughs> and activity in mega equals. And we start at zero. And we go until ten. And the activity is originally 5, and then it's uh, then it's originally 4.21, or I'll put in the full decimals there. Okay, so what do I want first? Graph. Right, so to graph this in an appropriate way, I need to calculate, uh, I need to write in log activity MVQ 
So that's log of this number. So let me just insert row to the left and copy this, put that there. And it's actually these two which I want to graph, not these two. Okay, so I'll highlight these. Uh, that doesn't seem right. No, that is it. Yeah. So, Sean, as you were saying, this one down at the end is negative. The last one, which is fine. Insert chart. Okay, so we have our scatter plot. I'll uh, have it like this. Please be careful with the units and the title. So this is log A against time. The x-axis is time in seconds. And the y-axis... Log A. I don't like T. T. Uh, log A in mega equals. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Got that? So you should have a nice straight line here. Uh, insert the trend line and show me the equation. There we go. From your graph, what's the lambda? The lambda is uh, the gradient 0 0.17 tray. Uh, it's stuck. 0 0.173 is the lambda. You got that? Yeah. Okay. And the unit per second. What is the half life? Okay, so the half life is log 2 over lambda. What did I say the lambda was? 0 0.173. 4 seconds. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, okay. What What is N0? No, N0. N0. So A0 A A was 5. A0 was 5 times 10 to the 6 BQ. So if A equals lambda N, then N0 minus, uh, minus, minus A0 over lambda, which will be 5 times 10 to the 6 over 4. No, over no, no. 0 0.173. Three. Why? Because it's mega. Mm. Oh, Mega atoms, you could. Whoa. Uh, two, one, two, three, four. Ah, oh, lazy. Twenty-eight point nine times ten to the six. Yeah, mega. No atoms, not moles. No, they're atoms. Yeah. Because the un B quotes is atoms per second, not moles per second. Mm -hmm. um, what is N at T11? I should, of course, said 11 seconds. Um, so, do you know what? I can just use my calculator right here because it'll be N0 E power minus lambda, it's 173, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Times T. The answer is that many. Yeah, that many. 4.31 times 10 to the 6. Ten to the six atoms. Congratulations. What? Yeah, don't be shocked, yeah. it happens. <laughs> okay, a close. Okay. Anything in applications? No. 
Okay. So I was this and start the next lesson? Yeah. Yeah.